Welcome back to our study on the Gospel of Matthew. Now, we have been focused to this point at looking at some preliminary remarks to set the stage for looking at the Gospel of Matthew itself. So this is the final one, and the theme through this series, opening series, has been the Kingdom of God. Our final text in preparation for the Gospel of Matthew is found at the end of the scriptures in Revelation chapter 21, and we are going to read verses 1 to 4. Then I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea is no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven, already like a bride, arrayed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice out of the throne crying, Lo, God's dwelling is with men, with men he will dwell, they shall be his people. And God will himself be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, no more waiting or crying or pain, for the first things have passed away. In this quick survey of the kingdom of God, we now are now at the end of the Bible. The main point that has been made is that this is a central idea of Scripture. The kingdom of God is there all through the Scriptures. This is not the case of someone taking a peripheral issue and putting it on a pedestal. It is a case of what has been one of the grand themes of Scripture. In essence, we can see it as a thread that has been there from the very beginning. What is one of the problems that bedevils Western Christianity? It is that we have recast the Christian faith in the light of the individualism of our culture. So we have created a faith that is centered on me, and what is important to me. Yes, the kingdom of God is about individuals, but it is about, but it is not about individuals first and foremost. You see, eternal life is not about me. Listen to Jesus' words on the night he was betrayed. He said, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. Matthew 26, 29, in the NIV. The promise of eternal life is not about I living forever as much as I have an opportunity to be in the eternal kingdom. There is a shift from what I have done and what I am to what he has done and what he is. If we were to ask what is the failing of the world that we are in, what we would say. There are a number of things that we could say, but let us focus on one. God has been pushed from the center of life and the running of this world. In the Old Testament, the temple was the symbol of God's presence in this world. In the life to come, and think for a moment why the temple ceased to be important in the first century CE. The presence of God will be clear and actual. If we are a believer in Christ, this is what we are seeking after. This is to be the longing of our heart, the pursuit in seeking after our own immortality can be selfish. We can look at Luke chapter 18 and verse 18 and the story of the rich young ruler who came with that question, what must I do to inherit eternal life. The Christian hope is, as John says in Revelation 21, that God will be in our midst. The reason why doctrine is so important in Christian faith is that what we believe has repercussions in other areas. If we reduce the future hope to an individualistic achievement, then that means we as a church cease to work for the building up of the kingdom of God. Now, there will be disagreement, disagreements about what various traditions mean when they say this, but that does not lessen the need for building up of the kingdom of God. 
You see, the hope of eternal life is not like that two-week cruise that we take as a reward for that milestone in your bed in our life. No, the kingdom of God is something we are working towards and will be something we will be working in.